Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com, continuing my free course on Node.js and JavaScript for complete beginners. In the last video, we took a look at control characters, and we also saw how you can use process.standardout.write to write text without a new line appearing after it. In this video, I'm going to give you an exercise that's going to use this stuff, and it's also going to use a lot of what we've seen so far in the course. So, as always, I would say, if you're a beginner, um, don't feel that you've got to plan out programs in your head at the start, necessarily. That can hold you back. So, if you have a program you want to write, whether it's an exercise or it's just something you've thought of, have a go at it. See how far you can get with it. Can you write any bits of it? Can you write something that's similar to what you um, what you actually want? You know, just have a go. Get in there. Type stuff. See what it does. Experiment. And I think that's a lot more profitable than just staring at a blank sort of page and thinking, how would I start and complete and finish this program? You know, just launch into it. So uh, I'll give you an exercise. It's, you may find it very easy, but then again, you may find it very hard. The important thing is just to try or else if you don't do this, do some practice of your own because you have to practice this stuff. You can't just watch videos. You've got to practice stuff to be able to use it. So bear in mind that when I give you this exercise, the thing to do is don't, don't just look at a blank screen and be overwhelmed by it. Just have a go at it and uh, see where you can get with it. See what bits you can do, you know. So I'll, sh I'll describe the exercise and then you can pause the video if you want to try it. And then I'll actually show you how to do it. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to start my multiplication.js here, my script with... Um, use strict. So this exercise here is to create a multiplication table. Uh, that's not quite all the exercise though. So what we want to do is we want to end up, let's clear the console here, it's annoying me. Uh, so we want to end up, let's use a multi-line string here, uh, sorry, a multi-line comment. We want to end up printing, in other words, displaying on the console a multiplication table that looks something like this. So we have the times one um, sort of multiplication uh, multiplications. Let's write one, two, separating these by tabs. And we go all the way up to eventually one times ten. Then on the next line, we'll have two, four, six, eight, all the way up to uh, twenty. And then we'll have some more lines. And then finally, the last line will be 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. Ideally, these should be lined up. But if they're not exactly lined up, then that's OK. So we want to output, we want to print this. In other words, output it on the console. It's the 10 times multiplication table, all the way from 1 times 1 to 10 times 10. And the dots are sort of bits you've got to fill in. But there's a little twist here because I'm going to suggest that you create a two-dimensional array and fill all this data, all these numbers, into the two-dimensional array. And then later in your program, after some blank lines, write some code that outputs the entire content of that two-dimensional array. So the end result will be, will be that you will print this 10 times 10 multiplication table. But you'll do it by first filling in a two-dimensional array. And then later on in your program, you will work through that array and output it all. Okay, and these are, these are tab characters separating the numbers. And after each line, we have, a, well, we have a new line character so that each line comes out on a separate line. All right, so if you want to have a go at that, pause the video now and try it. And don't forget, just just... Try to do some bits you can. If, you, if you're overwhelmed by the whole thing, just simplify it. Can you even output these numbers? Never mind about the array, never mind the table. Can you output 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on? So start simple and build up and see where you can get with it. All right, so pause the video now if you want to try that. All right, so let's take a look at it. The first thing that we need is a two-dimensional array. And a two-dimensional array is a one-dimensional array where the elements are themselves arrays. So let's create a one-dimensional array. I'll just call it table. So let's say let table equal 
and empty square brackets to initialize it to an empty array. Now, if I wanted to just add one row to this table, I would create a loop like for let i equal zero, i less than uh, less than ten, let's say i plus plus, and then we could add value to that table. So i here will go from zero to nine, which is not quite what we want because even for the first row, we want one to ten, not zero to nine. But it's a big step in the right direction. What if we wanted not just one row, but 10 rows? Well, then we could have a, a loop within our loop. So we could have let for let, let's call this j equals zero, j less than 10, j plus plus. Can we use that to fill a two dimensional array with numbers? So could we even use it to create a multiplication table that goes from zero times zero to nine times nine? Um, let's try that. So we want to add rows to our table. So within this outer loop, we've got to create rows. Every time we go around this loop, we need to create a row and add it to the table. So let's write, let we'll call it row equal an empty array. And then we can add values to this row in this inner loop. So row dot push j. That will give us um, well, that would that would basically just loop around and create ten rows, but we haven't added added them to the table. So after we in, add some numbers to the row, let's do table dot push and add the row to the table. So now we're adding ten rows to our table, where each row contains the numbers zero to nine, which is a step in the right direction. Let's already see if we can display that. So we'll go down further in the program and. How would we display this? Well, we could display it um, with a nested loop again. So we need to, for each row, we need to work along the row and output the numbers. Let's try this. So let's have four int i equals naught i less than uh, 10. Actually, how big is this outer array? The length of it is table.length. Let's do that. And I plus plus. And then within that, that's not in, that should be let. I'm getting confused with C in Java. All right. So within that, we can write for let J equal zero, J less than what? Well, we need to get a row out of the table. Let's, let's do that. So how would we get a row from this table? How would we get the row? the ith row, we could write let row equal table i. And then the inner loop's got to iterate over this row. So we could write let j equal naught j less than row dot length and j plus plus. Then we can get values out of the row. So we could write um, let value equal row j. Let's display these values and see what we've got. I don't want to get each value on a new line, so let's use process dot that's autocomplete being unhelpful. Process esque dot standard out dot write and we output value here. What does that give us? Let's have a look. Gotta run the right file that would help. So node multiplication.js. We've got an error. Why is there an error? Well, it's because process.standardout.write will not write numbers. It will only write strings. So as we saw in the last video, here we have to write to string. Let's try that. Yeah, well, we've got a load of numbers. But um, for one thing, we've got one massive line. We need new lines in there. Where should we put the new lines? So every time after we output a row, which we're doing here, we want a new line character. So we could use, well, we could use console.log to do that. Let's write console.log and just empty brackets and see how that looks. It's, it's a lot better, but 
well, the numbers are clearly not the right numbers, but they're halfway what we want, really. Um, so can we separate the numbers by tabs? Well, after each, after each write of a number, we want a tab character. So I could just add on a tab here with plus, or I could use another process dot stand out dot write. Let's try it. Backslash T. What does that look like? Well, now we've got numbers. Now the only problem is we're outputting the first row. Well, that's not the only problem, but we're outputting the first row over and over again. It also starts at zero, which we don't want. So we need to now, now we've, we're outputting this two-dimensional array successfully. We need to take a look at the content of it, which is not quite right. So to get the multiplication table, well, all I need to do really is multiply i by j. So multiply the sort of column number, column index by the row index, really. So if I write i times, let's write i times j. How does that look? Okay, let's zoom out and go back to the console. Uh, I did something wrong here. Oh no, there we go. Right. I'll just clear this and then output it. So now we've got, it is a multiplication table. The problem is it goes from 0 times 0 to 9 times 9. We want it to go from 1 times 1 to 10 times 10. Really what we want to do here is, instead of i times j, we want to add 1 to i and add 1 to j. So we can do that if we just, we're going to have to use brackets to, um, to stop this uh, expression that we're going to write being translated in the wrong way. But let's write i plus 1 in brackets times j plus 1. So that, that means that we add 1 to i before we multiply it. And then we multiply it by j plus 1. So let's run this. And we've got what we want. We've got 1 times 1 all the way up to 10 times 10. Okay, so if you did try this exercise and you, um, you've you got this printing out and you used a two-dimensional array to store the numbers and then access them again afterwards, then you've successfully completed the exercise, whether you use the exact same techniques that I've used here or something slightly different. Um, if you tried the exercise and you just couldn't get it to work, then don't feel bad. You know, if you did anything at all, that's that's really great. And I would say if, if you didn't get the exercise to work, try typing out this code and, you know, see that it actually works. You'll learn a lot just by typing it out. And try experimenting with it and check that you understand it if possible. Try to see what's going on. If you don't quite understand something, why something's there or whatever, try removing it or changing it and see if you can figure out exactly what's going on here. That's that's a really good thing to do. So it was a difficult exercise if you are a complete beginner. So don't feel bad if you couldn't get this working, but now you've seen how it is done, try it out for yourself and check that you can get this code working. Don't forget you can find all the code for this course on github.com slash cave of programming all one word and then go to my node.js repository. But there isn't value for, for learning purposes, there isn't value really in copying and pasting code. What you need to do is type it out yourself even if it might seem boring. And if you find yourself getting too bored by typing, don't forget you can learn to touch type you know, if you search on the internet, there are lots of free touch typing programs that teach you to type without looking at the keyboard. And that can massively speed up your typing. Probably only half of programmers do touch type. You don't have to, but it can speed up your learning by making you essentially less reluctant to type stuff. And it's a bit tricky to learn at first, but after a few weeks of forcing yourself to just touch type with emails or whatever you write, then you know, you'll get the hang of it and it, it will speed up your learning, I think, with coding quite a lot. But anyway, okay, so we'll leave it there for this video. Until next time, happy coding.